you single and looking for that special someone? Are you married and wondering, how can I make this better? Well, stay tuned to meet someone who can tell you just why things may be going awry in your relationship. My name is Yvonne Lewis, and you're watching Urban Report. to Urban Report. My guest today is Dr. John K. Jacob, author of The XY Theory and president of XYMatchQuest.com. Welcome to Urban Report, Dr. Jacob. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Yay, I'm so glad you're here. You know, so many people are wanting to be either in a relationship or they're already in a relationship and it's just really shaky. Right. What what are some of the reasons why you've written this book about relationships? Well, um, about 90% of relationships, dating relationships, never go all the way mm. to marriage, about over 90%. And uh, when we tested the couples, we even found for them, 85% of them were in what I call an XY relationship, where they're mismatched. Oh, so is that why they don't go further? Because they find out that they're mismatched? Yeah, 90% of the singles don't go further. Um, right. They don't know why they're mismatched. Right. They just know that something isn't right. So they have the option to break it off because they're not married yet and find someone else. But over 90% of them do that. And the real reason is a personality difference that they're completely unaware of. Huh. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So in your book, you talk about X and Y personalities. Right. Describe that. Okay, um, it's a personality type, and there are other personality types out there, but I wanted to take it a, a step further and find what I call a personality code. Personality types actually would tell you how someone is going to behave. Mm. Um, but I realized that we've known that for a long time, and our divorce rate is still at 50%. So I did some more research, about five years worth of it, and actually found that uh, when you look at something a little deeper, personality code, which is not just how someone would behave, but what someone's actual needs are in the relationship. This is something that's not known generally. No one really tells someone else, okay, this is what I need specifically. Mm. Um, most of us don't know. So I uh, had to create a test that could tell you what your specific needs are in the relationship. So you have an idea of what kind of a person you need to be looking for. Oh, that's great. So how did you, let's go back and, and talk about how you got to this point. How did you decide that you wanted to write about a relationship? Okay, quite accidentally. Um, there were a few things. One, I was bothered by the fact that the ratio of single men, especially in church organizations, the ratio of single women to men is six to one. Mm. So immediately I thought, okay, uh, our sisters need to date smarter. We need some help. It, Give us some help. We cannot do things the way we've been doing it because right. that ratio is, is, is horrific. Right. Um, so that was the first thing. Um, the second thing is, of course, the divorce rate is skyrocketing in, in Christian circles. Now it's, it's at 49% mm. last I, I heard, um, which is just on par with what's going on That's outside. That's almost half. It's, it's, yes, it's, it's, and it's as bad as it is for non-Christians. Yes. So yes. that was alarming. And, you know, I, I tend to be very curious. I was curious to know what might be causing that. Um, but also, and I, I did get permission to talk about this. Yes. But I observed my parents. Okay. <laughs> yes. Let's talk about that. Yeah. I, um, I grew up in a Seventh-day Adventist home. I grew up Catholic, but we converted pretty early. And so I was able to have the, you know, Seventh-day Adventist background. Um, and I observed three things in my parents. Number one, I observed that they, they truly loved the Lord. Um, and I observed that they really loved the church. They became officers, they did whatever they could to help out. And I noticed that uh, church members began to put them on a pedestal. Hmm. The perfect marriage. Look at brother and sister Jacob. Um, it's so wonderful and you, you young people need to have a relationship like this. But they didn't go home with us. Mm. They, my parents stayed together for 51 years because of their commitment to God and their commitment to marriage and to each other. 
but they weren't happy. And so from a very young age, it, it, it occurred to me that there has to be more than spirituality that's causing the poison that we have in relationships right now and leading us all the way to divorce courts. There had to be something more. So the moment I hit college, I, I started off with a degree in theology because I wanted to understand that aspect first mm. and then right, went right into a PhD in psychology and started doing research. And the more research I did, the more I discovered that personality differences were wreaking havoc in our relationships, way more than spirituality. This is so interesting, Dr. Jacob, because, you know, we have, and, and this is not just in your home, but in many homes, we have a face for church. Absolutely. And we have a face at home. Absolutely. And what, you, what you're telling me is that what you saw at home was a different face from what you saw at Absolutely. church. And it wasn't that your parents didn't love God, they obviously did. They did. It wasn't that they didn't love each other, they did, but they had these, these underlying issues. Yeah. So you did what many people might not do. You went and got a PhD and right. found, out how, found to, out how to address it, exactly. which is tremendous. Exactly. So what did you find in your research? What did you okay. find? You mentioned persona and that's, um, uh, Perfect, that's exactly what I found. I found out, and, and in addition, of course, uh, other sociologists and psychologists have been doing research. I mean, there's a lot of research within the last um, 10 to 15 years. And so what I found um, out of my research is that we actually have two personalities. Mm. So we have a social personality and we have a relationship personality. Okay, explain that. Okay, the social personality is the one that you use in church. Ah, that's your church face. That's your church face. Yeah. Okay, all right. It has one responsibility, and that is to make you look good. Mm. That would that person would be your makeup artist. Okay. That person would make sure that people like you, that you present yourself in a way that people think the best of you. Um, it also operates uh, on the job, which is why very often people again don't know who you really are when they see you only operating when other important people are observing you. Yes. Um, unfortunately, the social personality is also responsible for dating. Mm, your best foot forward, Your so best to speak. foot forward, totally. And now we know for a fact that it has a whole cache of hormones that it can use to trip us up in that process. There are hormones that come into play only when you think about dating someone that actually cause you to be blinded to their faults. Come on now, Doc. Absolutely. Come on now. So you're telling us that there are actually physiological mechanisms in place yes. that can help us not to see who we're dealing with. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. How deep is that? It's 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 a little scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, also, the whole from the whole gamut, um, the, the feeling of the butterflies in the stomach, all of that is chemical. Yes. Um, the, the feeling of falling in love you're getting on the phone and you're talking until four in the morning and you don't even know where the time went. Yeah. So normally you would have been hungry, but the hormones suppressed that, even the appetite, wow. to prepare you to fall in love. So that's why sometimes people lose weight too. Yes. When they are just falling in love, Absolutely. they can tend to lose weight because they're not they're as not hungry. Eating. Yeah. They're not, and isn't that amazing the it, way the body is, is made? It absolutely is. So what do you do? So tell but, us. So, but here's the problem. Um, so the social personality, however, it, and you also have the, you know, you, the euphoria and the excitement. Right. Well, that actually comes from finding someone that is somewhat different from mm. you, which is why we hear opposites attract. Yes. Opposites still attract. Even in XY theory, opposites attract. The problem is the hormones that cause that attraction are withdrawn when you get deep into the relationship, deep into the commitment, maybe even into the, the marriage. Those hormones are withdrawn along with the social personality whose job is finished. You know what? This is really, this is so interesting because I'm thinking about my own personal life and my past. Yeah. And this is so interesting because that's very true. The, the deeper you get into, like you can get into a marriage and then go, whoa, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> And why is it so clear to me now? <laughs> no offense to any of my exes. Yeah. But yeah, that is, that's yes. amazing. Yes. Yeah. So, and like any other hormone in the body, your body gets used to the chemicals that you put in. Right. You know. Right. Um, and so somewhere between three months and two years, most of us will get, uh, our bodies will get tolerant of the hormones. And so once those happy 
hormones are withdrawn, you see the person very clearly for who they really are. By then the social personality is gone and the relationship personality emerges, which is the person that you stuck with if you're married for the rest of your life. Dr. Jacob, that's deep. So now let me ask you something. Can you then, uh, does this make a case then for longer dating time so that you kind of get to find out who the person really is, who their relational, re relational face is? Longer, but not too long. Okay, explain. Yeah, now we have two personalities. We have an X-type and a Y-type personality. Right. Um, coming from the research. And they date differently. This mm. is the reason why I'm saying not too long. We know for a fact that X-type personalities tend to waste a lot of years, a lot of time in relationships that are going nowhere. Mm. Y-types do not. Mm. X-types date with their hearts, Y-types date with their heads. Okay, so wait, let's, let's go back now. Okay, so, so one side is more right brain, the other is more left brain. Are yes, you saying pre pre that? Pretty much. And mm -hmm. who's more right brained? Um, right brain would probably be. What are you thinking? The Y, the X, or the Y? The X or the Y. Well, I'm not. Sure. That's. I'm trying to yeah, get I'll, it clear in my head. One thinks with the head, the mm -hmm. other thinks with the heart. Which Absolutely. one thinks with the heart? The X. The thinks X. with the heart. Okay, so the X would maybe tend to be more right brain than the Y? Than the Y. Okay. So the X now does a lot of things, which is one of the reasons why I wrote the book. Um, as we said, we have a s singles problem. Yes. Um, and in and outside of the church, I mean, if you go to New York, the ratio is two to one. Yes. In certain parts of New York and big cities, two yes. to one. So you, uh, this is not the place to find someone. I mean, a lot of demographics factor in. Yes. Um, but X types, tend to do several things that do not help them actually find that person. And if you have a ratio of six to one, the odds are not in your favor, then you have to date smarter. Right. Okay. Which you should anyway. Which you should anyway, right? Right. right. So X types, for starters, they, we all have a blueprint. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk about that blueprint a little in, in, in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we all have a blueprint coming to us from childhood, given to us by our parents, given to us by society, by culture. Um, X, and and it, it, it sort of feeds to our standards. It tells us what our standards should be in a partner. Mm. Well, exes tend to, when they meet someone they like, relax those standards mm. throughout mm. the blueprint and say to themselves, I'll change whatever I find. Mm. And Which is a big problem. It, it Instead is. of dealing with the person as they are, I'm right. gonna change him or her. Right, or finding someone that matches your blueprint instead of discarding it. Ah. So exes do that again because they're going with the heart. And if, it, if this person feels right to them, right. forget about this list. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who needs this list? Yes, I wanted a guy to be at least 5'10", but he's four, nine, four, four feet, nine inches tall, and he's really sweet, he's really sweet. So I'm just gonna hold on to him and see how things go. Right, right, you know? right, right, um, right. That is not something that a white type does. Okay. Now the white type might date the four foot nine inch girl, right? But always at the back of his mind is this is not the person I'm taking home to mom, because mm. he's always thinking head, mm -hmm. not heart. Mm -hmm. And so many times you get the X type with the Y type. The X is wasting time. Wasting time. The Y is just maybe. Marking time. Marking time. Yes. And you've got an issue. Yeah. Marking time until someone comes along. Right. And by the way, Y types are notorious for not giving closure to their partners. Mm. The moment that other person shows up, you have no idea, you have no clue. Behavior changes, some, some of them completely disappear. You've heard the stories of guys who disappeared and didn't yes. eat without a trace. Yes. Yes. Without a trace. Yes. This is Y like behavior. They tend to leave their partners without closure. So when I created the test, I actually had to create more than one test because there were so many women coming to me and asking me about past relationships mm. that I created a test that they could do for that ex. It's in the book. Yeah. For that ex. Yeah. And it would tell them whether he was a Y. So they could have the closure they never had. Oh, that's, you know, that's such a deep thing because so closure is so important because it's hard to move on really emotionally yes. if you don't have closure right. from a previous relationship. Exactly. So this test helps, actually helps the person to move on. That's such, that's it a does. very significant thing. Because we all want to know, where did I go wrong? Right. Was it me? 
Right. Is it something about me? Yes. Well, now we're finding out, and even um, some of the science that's coming out in the last five years, mm -hmm. it's telling us that the blueprint that that Y-type partner used to tell him that you were not the one mm -hmm. had nothing to do with you. Mm. Absolutely handed to him like an assignment. This is what you look for. So no matter how good you treated him, no matter how good you looked, no matter how long you put up with his nonsense, his foolishness, thinking, as an ex would, that you can change him. Mm -hmm. He did his thing, he was resistant to change, and it had nothing to do with you because he came into the relationship knowing what he wanted. This is the reason why the book is subtitled How Relationships End Before They Begin. Because one person at least is coming in knowing you're not the one. I'm just here for some time. Just, you know, let me see my watch, let me see how long it is before I. Dr. Jacob, you could save, you know how much, t obviously you do, you wrote the book, how much time and time. emotional time. energy you can save someone. Absolutely. If they know this. Absolutely. And also, if they know that it's nothing that they did. I think that's so important because uh, I, I read a book uh, a while ago um, on, uh, I think it was Men Who Can't Love or something like that, and it was, it, it was a few years ago, actually, and it basically alluded to the idea that it's not necessarily you. It's Some people are, C I call them CPs, commitment phobics, where yeah. they just can't yeah. make the commitment. Those are your Y types. Those are your Y types. Yeah, and there's, uh, there are reasons why they can't make a commitment, because they have a blueprint. This is the thing. I know exes should not throw away their blueprints as quickly as they do. They do everything, uh, a lot of things wrong. Mm. Exes will come in and they have the blueprint, and they, they give too much. Mm -hmm. They start too early, mm. you know, disclosing and sharing and giving and bonding. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because they're thinking with their hearts, their hearts and they want that closeness. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you ever want to know if you're in an XY relationship, try and figure out who's the one doing most of the adjusting. Mm -hmm. Who's the one doing most of the changing? The X, the X type person is doing that. And as a result of that, they think that the person that they're dealing with will also reciprocate in kind, and, and that person doesn't, because that person doesn't have that personality. But they don't know that, they don't understand that. So they think, it's just a matter of time. People need different lengths of time. So he, this guy needed two years, maybe I'll give him five. Maybe after five years, he'll really change. My parents were 51 years married when my dad passed mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. And I got my dad to take the test on his dying bed because he refused prior to that. Why is that not to want the test? Mm -hmm. And when he took the test, the disparity, because the test really, um, the long version of it goes from zero to 100. Mm. When he took the test, my mom was 95, meaning she always had high needs of things like intimacy, high needs of communication, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Yes. Um, my dad's score was 25. Wow, look at the disparity. points that they never could overcome in 51 years. My. And it didn't mean that they couldn't. It just meant that if they knew about it and they knew what to do about it, things could have been different. So are there tools that oh, you yes, can absolutely. use to close the gap between absolutely, X's and absolutely, Y's? Absolutely. And by the way, anything more than a 14-point difference, you already know that they're going to have problems. On a 100-point scale, we found anything more than 14 points in communication or intimacy. Um, so exes tend to, communication exes, or what we call ex-communicators, uh -huh. <laughs> they tend to like a lot of communication. Mm -hmm. Not just like it, but need it. Mm. This is what's different between this and any other book out there. The other books talk about preferences. When you go on a matchmaking site, mm -hmm. they, they ask you, do you enjoy the beach? Right. Do you like the movies and the opera? Right. Well, guess what? Their preferences. Yeah, we don't like to go to the beach, but the guy that takes you to the beach 10 times before the wedding mightn't take you one time in the next 10 years after because it's not his practice. Right. It's a preference that he stated, again, social, social personality, so that he could look good, so that he can get you. So these other sites kind of measure your social, social personality and not your relational. Exactly. Very interesting. And, and the few that are catching on and trying to do a little thing with personality, they still are doing personality type and not personality code. Personality type says, okay, this is my type and this is how I'll behave, remember? Right. Personality code says, I don't want to know, just know about your type. I want to know what drives you. I mm. want to know what will drive your practices. 
I want to know if you continue to be nice to me, to be good to me, the way you are right now, before I say I do, before I let you put that ring on my finger, I need to know what you are going to be like inside of the relationship. So, Because you don't really know. Because you have no way to know. Until you get there. And that's the reason why I call it a code. You hear about Da Vinci Code and yes. different codes. Yes. Well, the, the word code itself simply means covered. It, you know, something that is unknown, yes. kind of, uh, you know, like a secret. Right. So the reason why, that's the reason why I said we need a personality code because we need to go a step further to find out Will this person meet my, they meet my needs now, will this person meet my needs on the other side? Mm -hmm. So what I did is, I had to find a test, create a test, and it took five years, I mean a lot of revisions, like a hundred revisions. <laughs> I had to create a test that would skip your social personality, which everyone sees. Right. And will go straight and measure your relationship personality, which even you don't know about. Wow, that is incredible. Do you know? I, everybody is going to want to take this test. I hope so. Every, I know you do. Yeah. Every, but every, I mean, really, because why not? Because why not find out who you've got or who you're considering? Right. Right. I mean, now, suppose one partner wants to take the test and the other one doesn't. Okay. The, te the book has four tests. Okay. Um, two for, you know, willing partners. Right. Right. Which, by the way, are very rare, 15%. Mm. Really? Sorry, but yes. So 85%? 85% are in XY couples and have a partner that is going to be reluctant to take the test. In fact, I even found some X types that are reluctant to take the test. Hmm. Why, why would that be, you think? X types get their self-esteem from who they're with. Hmm. When, whereas Y types get their self-esteem from who they are. Now, can you have combinations of yes, the XY type? As a matter of fact, we have, you actually have four personality types, which, okay. is, which is why I always tell people you only have a 25% chance of accidentally choosing the right partner. Oh, the other 75%? Of not, because there are four types. And this is how it goes. You have XX. Now, the X simply means high. When you think of X, a lot of people say, are those... Um, Chromosomes, uh, even on the plane, I had the book out, and the guy, the, this lady said, you're talking about chromosomes in your book. Right, right, said, X no, and no, Y no. chromosome, yeah, yeah, right, no, right, no. right. I said, no, personality types. Right. X simply means high. So anything 51 and above is in the X category, and anyone 50 and below is in the Y. Oh. So if we're talking about communication, somebody that has high communication needs will be 51 and above. Somebody ha that has low communication needs will be 50 and below. Same thing for intimacy. So if you have high intimacy needs, you'll be an X, what I, what I call an intimate X. Mm. And if you have low um, intimacy needs, you will be in the Y category. So because of that, you can have an XX, meaning you're high with both, communication and intimacy. Or you could have a YY, meaning that you're low with both, like my dad was. Because mm. my dad and, and my mom were both, both high on both ends and both low on, on the other end. Yeah. So they, I mean, they really suffered. Yes. And so you could also have a YX, meaning that you have a low need for communication. So the first letter is always communication. So you have a low need for communication, but you have a high need for intimacy. Mm. And then, of course, you could have the XY. I actually have uh, my best friends in California. They've been married for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And they have what I call an inverted relationship. How is that? It's his is YX and hers is XY. Ah, now does it work no, for them? No, it does not. Oh. And has not. They, they've stuck together, which right. is why this test doesn't predict whether or not you'll get a divorce. It just predicts how rough, rough and rocky the ride is going to be. Okay. So they've stuck it out. Uh-huh. But they've both told me separately how horrible some parts of it are. Yes. And, and it's always predictable. I could have given them this test 20 years ago and told them exactly what to expect, exactly what they're telling me right now. So with the inverted relationship, X, Y, Y, X. Mm -hmm. It means one person has what the other person doesn't need and the other person is giving what the other person doesn't want. Wow. So, so they're not speaking each other's at language. All, at all. In the two most, and, and when I say communication and intimacy, I didn't just make it up. They did a tremendous amount of studies in the, from 2000 on and they found that every time couples fought, when they, when they distilled the arguments down. It always came back to communication and intimacy. One of the one or both of those not being met. And we're not talking about sexual intimacy, Absolutely right? Absolutely not. We're talking sexual, about emotional. Just intimacy. emotional. 
And, and some people say, well, we've always known that. But no, what we have known is what the components of each are. Mm. So in the book, I have about 15 components of communication that people look for when they're high communicators. Um, and it's easy to tell. Like if you're dating, um, and the guy happens to let you see the phone, you probably won't. Uh -huh. But if he happens to let you see the phone, look and see, or, or just look at the text that he sends you. Mm -hmm. If he sends you a text that is as long as a thesis, mm -hmm. he's an ex-communicator. Mm -hmm. You will know that immediately. Mm -hmm. Now, you send a long text to a Y that you think requires some explanation or some you know, response. Mm -hmm. Very often, you will get a one or two word response. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> tell me you've not right, right. okay. You said all of this. Well, or, I was wondering or what wait, we should or do. K. Okay, exactly. <laughs> Just K. Hey, you know why you get the K? Because they, again, everything, their communication is functional mm. as everything else. Mm. And they're thinking, if I drop the O. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the K makes all the sense in the world. Why right. does she need an what extra letter, know? right? <laughs> and, that, and that is what you're dealing with. That is the personality that you're dealing with for the Y communicator compared to the X. And it's not, I tell people, because I have a lot of Ys that come up. Uh, there are this guy, when I, I, when I do pre presentations, every two or three months, I'm somewhere mm. doing a presentation or a seminar in a church or in an organization. And I have these people come up to me afterwards, especially the Ys, not the Xs so much, the Ys. One guy came up to me and he said, I am a converted Y. Mm. And that kind of broke my heart because I said, you know, I hope I'm not giving the impression that Ys are bad, terrible people. Right, right. I said, no, no, no. Nobody's right or wrong in this. Right. It's right. just you one type of person, one personality type, and I'm another. We're different. That's, That's what right. it is. It's about That's differences, right. not about right and wrong. Exactly. It's not. You're not saying that X's are good people and Y's aren't. They just have a different perception. Yeah. Different way different of meeting way each of other's me needs. Yeah. 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 So we just have like about one minute. Okay. Is there anything that you want the viewers to know? Well, the book XY Theory is available everywhere and in every format. You can get it as an ebook on your Kindle. Uh, you can go to Amazon.com. Some friends called from the UK to say it's in bookstores over there. So you can get it everywhere. But you could also get it on my website, xytheory.com or jacobinstitute.com. Um, but it's available everywhere and anywhere you go. We're also trying to get it in our Adventist book centers. So I would try, I would try there first and see if they, if they have already gotten their shipment. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being with us. And may God bless you as you continue to help relationships everywhere. Thank you. Once again, it's time to go. You know, relationships are so critical and we just sometimes neglect to really focus on the importance of knowing who am I dating or what's going on in this marriage. Thanks for tuning in. Join us next time. It just wouldn't be the same without you.